What's good, YouTube? This is Boxing Wave, and we are back with another fight breakdown. Josh Taylor is going to be making his return facing Jack Catterall tomorrow, about 2 p.m. Eastern. And this is going to be covered by The Zone, okay? This is from their highly controversial uh, fight back in 2022 with Josh Taylor, who was undisputed at the time, faced off against Jack Catterall, and where, in a fight where most people felt that Jack was robbed of a decision. OK, um, and I'm one of those people. I'm one of those people. You know, I, I did. I'm going to be honest, man. You know, I'm I'm going to change the vibe of this video because a lot of this is, is, is not uh, I'm not going to be super overly technical here. This is one of those fights where. It's logically. Jack should win this fight. You know, Jack. I feel most people feel Jack won the first fight, right? I think it was one of the worst robberies we've seen. I actually went back and watched it recently, and I thought it was worse than what it was in the first viewing of the fight. I just watched it the other day, and it was just it was bad. It was bad. Um, I didn't I didn't like doing this breakdown because it it has nothing to do with like film study or anything. You know, logically, Jack should win. Um, if you have a gut feeling about Josh Taylor winning, like if you're a fan, I am a fan. If you have a feeling that Josh can pull it off, then you're going to go that way. I don't think it's a bad bet to take Josh pulling off the upset because he is the underdog. Not much of an underdog, but he is an underdog going in this fight. And it's not like I think Jack Catterall is a fighter that is like unbeatable. You know, so if you look at it that way, I can see why people would go with Josh. But it's not clear to me. It's not clear because I don't know what Josh is bringing. I know what Jack is bringing. I've seen it in other fights, fights before Josh, fights after Josh. I know exactly what Jack is bringing to the table. I already know what he did in the first fight. What can Josh do here? Is Josh have anything left in the tank? I don't know. It's a complete gamble. It's a complete gut feeling type of thing. If you do pick Josh, if you think Josh could pull it off, that's it. You know, and Josh fought Tiafimo Lopez right after Jack Catterall, which was a year later. And he's not saying right, right after, but. He fought Tia Fimo a, a year later. And I believe at that time, he was a, a slight favorite. You know, Tio was coming up to 140. I think he just had one fight at 140. You know, we all remember what happened to him in the George Campbell's fight. So a lot of people was unsure what how that fight was going to go. But Jack, I mean, I'm sorry, Tio just, just dominated him. You know, I think he won just about almost every round. He was he, he was showboating. He was toying around with Josh. He overpowered the bigger Josh Taylor. Um, he outboxed him. He was more athletic. It, it, I mean, he hurt him. It, it was just it was bad. And we haven't seen Josh since, right? And that was about a year ago now. So I don't know what Josh has left. I know in his best days. Um, before becoming undisputed, it seemed like Josh would always find a way to pull off the win. And I haven't seen that version of Josh, or maybe it's because he's just been completely outmatched. I really don't know. I don't know if he lost his will to be great. You know, I think maybe becoming undisputed, um, it, 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 it might have, it might have, Felt like he he had he maybe lost his hunger. I mean, that's what I'm trying to say. He might have lost his hunger, and not taking away anything from Jack and Tio, but the Jack is specifically the Jack Catterall fight. Jack won the fight with ease. He didn't really have to adjust much. I think when the fight started to become a little bit more competitive, it's after. Josh got knocked down in that eighth round, I think. And he started to pick up the pressure and be a little bit more physical, you know. 
And and at that point, Jack was probably a little burnt out, um, a little tired, but he was winning the fight clearly up to that point, like with ease. I mean, even in at that point, he already won the fight to me. Going to the eighth round, no matter what Josh did, even if you gave Josh the last four, which I'm still not even sure he won those four those four rounds, Jack already had done enough to win the fight, in my opinion. And he was up so comfortably. It, it just, it really didn't matter at that point. But that's when the fight began for Josh. But it was too little, too late, you know. And what I've seen Jack do, or Josh do in his better days, like I was saying, he always found ways to win. I remember the Victor Postle fight. And I remember Victor Postal was beating him in a similar fashion early on. It seemed like Postal also being tall, also being a very good outside fighter, was just beating Josh with his timing and his range and stuff like that. He was just beating him to the punch. And I remember Josh, much earlier in that fight compared to Jack, made some kind of adjustment in that fight. And started to fight more aggressive and started a rough Victor Postal off, you know? And that's what you do against good boxers. Guys that seem to be outpointing you like Regis Progre was. Regis Progre, to me, on the outside was outpointing Josh Taylor in that fight. And what Josh did was just, he decided to just be more physical, fight more on the inside, you know, where Regis is not that strong. That's not where his strength is. It is, you know, Regis is more of an outside fighter, um, but Regis have short arms too. So that is kind of why he's had issues in the last couple of years. But going back to Josh, Josh didn't always look great against fighters that looked good um, or that fought well on the outside, you know. And this fight here, there were there were no adjustments. It was really no adjustments. I mean, Jack was just winning. And he kept winning, and he kept winning, and Jack being a southpaw, southpaw facing the southpaw. I know, I know Josh is capable of switching, you know, which he rarely did in that fight. I know Josh can fight and outscore you or beat you on the inside by being more physical. I know Josh is capable. More, I think he has more than what we saw in that fight. So if he could find a way to bring that energy into this rematch because I don't know maybe he maybe he's motivated to win maybe taking that L against Tiafima Lopez has made him motivated has brought the hunger back hearing what everybody has said about him over the last few years maybe he needs it and I don't think the judge is going to do him any favors in this fight I mean Josh is not a champion anymore you know he's not undefeated um, there's no reason to give him another gift here. You know, everybody's turned his ba their backs on him. So maybe that's the motivation he needed. You know, the, the, the backlash that he received from the Jack Catterall fight, maybe it just wasn't enough. You know, and Tiafimo making him lose and embarrass him, embarrassing him in that fight. Maybe that's the motivation he needed. But when it comes to logic, looking bad against Jack, clearly losing in my opinion, looking bad against Tiafimo, dominated in that fight. Um, the injuries, the amount of injuries. And another thing is too, why is why didn't Josh just move up after Ramirez? Why? You know, you're a big guy at 140. Those extra seven pounds would make you better. It would make you stronger. It would make your punch resistance uh, better. You know, it would improve that. It, it might even improve your power, your strength overall. You know, I know the competition is even better at 147. So I understand. Maybe that's part of the reason why he didn't move up. Maybe he didn't feel confident enough to move up. But why are you staying at 140? Even this fight is at 140. Why? 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 Like it doesn't make sense. You are like what mid thirties at this point. Uh thirty-three, I'm sorry. But 
you should have moved up out by now. You know? Um, he has a new coach. I think if he comes with a good game plan, um, so many things he lacked in that first fight. Where was the jab? Where was the feints? All I seen him do was crouch down to Jack Catterall's height and play the chess match that Jack Catterall was better playing, you know? Um, you just trying to time Jack and you're not throwing many punches. You fought his fight. And I was watching a little bit of the Jorge Linares fight with Jack Catterall. And uh, that was re Jack's most recent fight. And I'm like thinking to myself, at least Jorge is taking chances. You know, and I know it's a different fight because Jorge is a right-handed guy and stuff. So I know it's a different, but it's like the older man, Linares, is taking more chances than Josh did, you know, like as I was watching that fight. You know, and Jack is a chess player. He will sit there and wait until the perfect time to shoot that straight left. And that's what he did in the first fight. And Josh just didn't adjust. You know, and you can't overlook the right hook of Jack as well. He won simply off just his jab, his straight left, and his right hook. He didn't have to do much. Sometimes the fight got rough, especially specifically later in the fight. And he would just tie him up. And Josh just had nothing for him. He had nothing for him. Um. So, yeah, I think logically you got to go with Jack. But I think Josh can improve and make it a more physical fight. I don't think he's a Matias. You know, I don't think he's a Gary Antoine Russell. And I'm talking about Josh. I don't think he's going to come with that approach like those guys do on, an, on a regular basis. Josh doesn't move his head. So he's an e easy target. He never did move his head well. Okay, that's never been a strength of his. But he needs to make it a fight. Pressure bust pipes. And he needs to find a way to land that hook. You know, when Jack is leaning to his left, shoot the hook. You know, um, he needs to do things that's going to throw off Jack a little bit. You know, Jack is good defensively. He rolls the punches really well. Um, you know, he moves his head pretty good. It's going to be a tough one. I do Josh think, I do believe that Josh could win. If you want to place a little bit on Josh, do it. Um, but to me, it's just so hard to pick for him when I don't know what he's bringing. He doesn't look good neither. You know, I just... Looking at him, every time I look at him, he looks older. He looks like he's a... He went from winning undisputed to just becoming an old man, you know? He just looks like it, and his face just doesn't look good. Uh, it's hard to pick him, and I want him to win. I do. I do want him to win. I, I want to see him bounce back. You know why? Because... I appreciate what he did. He did everything that I want from boxers. Before Turkey Alashi got into this, in the mix, he gave me the tournament, the World Boxing Super Series. He was in that. All right, He fought the other fighter that was unified not too long after that. Um, I appreciate that. You know, I love the guys that was in the tournament. Um, uh, Usyk. Usyk. Uh, in new way, you know what I mean? I like the guys that was in the tournament. I respect those guys. So he did it the hard way. But we have a new age in the 140 pound division. You know, and when Josh picked up the pieces of from Terrence Crawford, you know, it was a good look for him becoming undisputed and all. It was a fun tournament and everything. Um, but this new crop of 140 fighters is so much talent there, you know, and even Jack hasn't really proven to be the very best, you know, guys like him and Sandor Martin has just shown up on a big nights and they've looked good. 
Um, but I got to go with Jack here. You know, I have to go with Jack until Josh shows me that he's back. I have to go with Jack. You know, and Jack, I've been talking about Josh so much in this video. Jack wants his vengeance. Jack has focus solely on Josh. He's taking time away to try to get the Josh Taylor fight. I believe this fight was rescheduled a couple of times. All right. So with that being said, you got to think that Jack already knows what to do. And even in those later rounds where it seemed like Josh was picking up the momentum, Jack can work on that as well and adjust to whatever rounds where he didn't look so sharp. I mean, if anybody wants to win this fight, it must be Jack. I mean, he he was robbed of undisputed. This guy could have been in un, he could have been in that his he could have made history. Being a four belt champ, even if he didn't keep all four titles, he was robbed of that. So if anybody is motivated to win, it should be Jack. Got to go with Jack. Got to go with Jack. All right. Um. Anyway, um, that's my prediction, man. I don't think there's going to be a knockout. Jack is just not that guy. I know he dropped Josh. I know he was able to hurt him. Uh, Josh is still pretty durable, but if he's really like completely f falling off, it wouldn't be the most shocking thing to see. It really wouldn't be. All right. Like I said, it was going to be a different breakdown. You know, I didn't want to get into the highly technical stuff because we know what we got from Jack. We just don't know what we got from Josh. We don't know. We could sit here and speak hypotheticals. This is what he could do. He could do this here. He could change this. I don't even know if he has it anymore. He has to show us here that he has it. All right. Um, anyway, that's my breakdown. Please subscribe to the channel, smash the like button, share the video if you like the content. And I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. All right. Y'all have a good one. Peace.